Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 once again on the legendary map Anorian. This time we have the purple Isengard player Principino, he's teamed up with the orange Gondor player Dexter, they are against the green Gondor player Kiwi and Kiwi is teamed up with the blue Rohan player Noldor. So Gondor Rohan on the left side against Gondor and Isengard on the right side. Pretty good matchup. Nobody has actually the upper hand in this matchup. The only good thing about this situation for the Gondor Rohan team is they have like the early presence. You know what I'm saying? Since Rohan is the faction who can recruit many, many additional peasants from the farms inside and outside. And this Isengard player doesn't start with the Uruk pit. That means that Gondor Isengard team, they won't get the chance to, you know, recruit any units anytime soon. And this, of course, is going to favor the Gondor Rohan team. So pretty good. The farm, by the way, is going to be taken down. That's pretty unexpected. Normally, Gondor Rohan, I was expecting them to focus down the meals from Isengard. But sometimes, you need to do the unexpected stuff. Because I believe the Gondor Isengard team, they didn't expect this as well. And for that reason, the farm is going to be taken down. And that's, of course, going to hurt the economy from Dexter, the orange Gondor player, quite a lot. Warchan has been used defensively. In the meantime, Rohan is trying to pressure this. Lumber mill workers are not working and that's also something you need to keep in mind. You don't have to always destroy the lumber mill, you know? Sometimes you can't do that and when this is the case, just try to kill its workers. Which is as effective since the only way you can make money from the lumber mill is when your workers are working. The Hobbit is doing a nice job but there was already forcing Dexter to build a defensive tower. Gondor is defending the other mill, which is pretty nice. Gondor soldiers in a one-on-one -on -one sit situation of course are stronger. And Hobbit was able to get cloaked. That's a massive advantage for the Gondor player Kiwi. Not only he will be able to de deny Dexter from recapturing this farm, but he will be capturing the farm for himself instead. Which, by the way, is a huge advantage since from the farms you get the food bonus and he will have now two farms inside and three farms outside. That's a discount of 25% for the Gondor Knights. Long story short, his Gondor Knights are going to be way cheaper then the Gondor Knights from Dexter. I will show you guys the second the stable from Dexter is up on the field. But you can see he needs to only invest 600 and Dexter will have to invest 640. Which doesn't sound too crazy, but trust me on that one, in the early game, 40 and even 20 resources are quite effective, especially because you need to recruit more than one Gondor Knight. So in long terms, this is going to just add up on each other, you know, 40, 40, 40, and you will have to pay 120 more. And again, in early game, this means quite a lot. So let's check that. Yeah, the Gondor Knights, 680. You know, 80. That's a lot, man. That's more than 10%. You need to pay more in compared to your opponent. This meal was protected. That's great. But the Hobbit, once again from Noldo, is doing a phenomenal job. Killing those Lumber Mill workers all the time. This way he can cut the resource income from Principino. I believe he was getting Lourdes on the field. Yeah, Lourdes is here. Lourdes is pretty nice against Rohan. Not that great against Gondor Knights. Because Gondor Knights are generally much tankier um, than the Rohirrim. And I believe we won't see Rohirrim. We potentially, this Rohan is actually planning to buy the middle camp. I was hoping that he's getting some heroes like Eomir and Theorin and getting some Rohirrim archers on the field for the mobile gameplay from Gondor Rohan team. But that's not going to be the case. We will be using the Hobbit, uh, Meriadoc Brandybuck, to capture this middle camp as soon as possible which is pretty nice because middle is like the center of the map and this way you will have always the vision control you will have to sustain because rohan can just build some wells and this way gondo doesn't need to do that and gondo will have just one more spot he can use for a farm or a blacksmith to just constantly have more money than the orange gondo player dexter and also the money got captured by the green gondo player kiwi which is pretty nice for the gondo rohan team he's now having a full base the farm was still under his control for a long time, and you can see the base difference, right? This base is looking like that from Gondor, and the other base is looking like that. And just because of the one farm advantage. So pretty much like two farm advantage, because you have one farm and your opponent has one less farm. Smart move, I like this a lot. He's gonna use actually the early advantage he has, and creep all the layers as soon as possible. That means he will get the power points unlocked a bit faster. Kiwi is also trying to creep this work layer on the right side of the map offensively. And Lourdes at the very same time is trying desperately to get some experience. He needs to be level 3 for the Carnage and level 5 for the Leadership. 
Now about leadership, Condor Isengard team, that's the only weakness about them. They don't have that much leadership, unlike Rohan Isengard, for example, because Gondor can't provide any sustain or leadership, mobile leadership at least, for his ally. Since every hero from Gondor, besides Gandalf, has to level up first before they can do anything. While Rohan, for example, can just recruit Theorin, who is giving you 50% more damage and armor from level 1. Okay, lots of pressure, lots of pressure. But uh, yeah, the Isengard piece is not looking great. Rohan, Gondor team, they have the time they need. I'm assuming Noldo is getting some heroes on the field very soon. Because that's the only reason why you would ever go for 4 statues. For 30% discount on your heroes. Now, heroes like Legolas who normally cost 3000 will cost you only 2100. And Aragorn who would normally cost 3500 will cost you only 2450. So you get more than 1000 discount for the King of Gondor. And yeah, Gondor Isengard team, they are kind of behind. They need to make something happen as for example getting upgrades on those Gondor Knights and going for a rush to the middle of the map. Or get some pikemen finally and creep to, you know, protect your mills, which is hopefully going to be the case very, you know, very very soon. But this Gondor is quite rich. He has even this farm now from his ally. Come on now. <laughs> he is rich, dude. He has four farms right now. And you see when you right click on an ability like that, you can also target the invisible unit. That's what Lourdes did to kill the Peregrine Took from this area. So Dexter finally can recapture this farm after a long time. The base rush is happening. He has already heavy armor and forge plates with three Gondor Knights. Holy moly, this Gondor doesn't have, even have like armor yet, right? No, he doesn't have armor yet. Imagine that, how far ahead he is in compared to the orange Gondor player Dexter. That means Principino now has to invest lots of money into recruiting more and more and more pikemen who are going to be a terrible choice against Legolas. Legolas is gonna fish them for this. But Legolas has to watch out since Lourdes is an anti-hero. Beautiful. Uh, you will need some levels. With level 4 you unlock the Trine Archers which can get those Yeoman Archers later on from level 1 to level 3 instantly. And also Rohirrim Archers can get benefit from that as well as Elvin Warriors. Even the elves, they don't get too much experience from that. But of course, oh, be careful. Yeah, armor upgrade is just massive, you know? And if you guys are wondering, for example, like, let's say you are playing Gondor Mirror against your friend, and you have blades, he has armor, he's always gonna win. Armor is just much more effective in those skirmishes. Also, when it comes to rush the base, for example, Forge Blade is only good to kill the stuff a bit faster, while armor is giving you the sustain you need and the durability you need to withstand and tank much more damage over time. The pressure is real, and during all this time, the Gondor Rohan team, they are untouched. Like, they don't lose any of these farms. Indeed, I'm assuming this farm is gonna be level 3 very soon. And uh, no. Not yet, but very soon. This farm is already level 3. Uh, stable level 2, almost level 3. The Night Shield purchase, which is going to make those Gondor Knights even tankier against arrows, like, for example, from the Towers, but also from Lourdes. So, long story short, they will almost be able to 1v1 those pikemen. When they're highly leveled, they can. That's the only battle for Middle-earth game in which this is possible. Oh, but yeah. Cripple, Lourdes, showing his quality. Dude, Lourdes is such an amazing hero, boys. And that's a lot of potential wasted from Rohan. Now he needs to invest so much more money and also time, of course, into recruiting the Legolas, who was just level 1. That's why getting heroes on the field against Lourdes is always like a... Eh, not the best choice. If you don't know, what Isengard can do is he can always use... Um, Pretty much, guys, Lourdes is as fast as Legolas. So as long as Legolas keeps running away, Lourdes will never get the chance to cripple him down. But if you choose the Vision of Palantir from your spellbook and you use it on your Lourdes, you can this way increase the movement speed from your Lourdes and from your Lourdes. And this way you can chase and catch the enemy Legolas. And he's almost level 4. Level 5 is going to be a huge power spike for the Isengard Gondor team as Lourdes will unlock his damage leadership. Alvin Elias was kind of blown away. Elven allies when there are so many Gondor Knights from Dexter. It's a very questionable move. Oh, almost level 5. Half a level is needed. 60% damage boost. And if you don't know, Boromir gives you the same exact leadership also. So if you get Boromir level 4 and Lourdes level 5, those, you know, not those because he has nothing on the field yet, but the Isengard combos later on, 
they will have 120 percent increased damage permanently as long as those heroes are remaining on the field which again is able to stack with the war chant for 170 percent total damage boost which by the way is crazy amount and you can even one shot those heroes like Gandalf in Aragon even in no time and of course, before they will get the chance to commit to the middle of the map, to the middle camp, Isengard will definitely need the Freezing Rain. Without Freezing Rain, it's tough and difficult. Now the counter-attack is happening. Dex is finally able to put some counter-pressure on his opponent. Maybe try to take down this level 3 farm. I'm kind of a bit disappointed from Kiwi. I was expecting to see Gunsel of the Wind, but it looks like he doesn't have the power points for that, even though he has almost the money for that, and he's already building up the Siege Warks. Okay, so this Isengard has not the best time of his life, let me tell you that much. <laughs> like, he's struggling, he's like in prison, he's not able to leave the base anytime soon. Luckily, with the industry, those furnaces are gonna hit level 2 and level 3 a bit faster. And the higher ranked they are, the more harder it's going to become for the Gondor Rohan team to destroy those buildings. Because furnaces level 3 have like 6500 health, and they also will work like a tower. So you will have additional damage from your structures, which increases the durability overall from your castle. So almost level 5, really close. Gandalf is going to be recruited, but he is going to be grey for now. Dexter on the other side. The orange Gondor player is also saving up for Gandalf. He has the power points already from the spellbook, but he is still struggling money-wise because he cannot win those fights against the enemy Gondor Knights, because enemy Gondor Knights are highly leveled. Now we have Theodin for 50% more damage and armor, and we have Legolas who can melt through your pikemen and melt through your heroes once he has some levels on him and yeah we have yomana archers too we have a lot of gondor knights gandalf is going to be there very soon gandalf the gray or gandalf the pleb because gandalf when he is not white he can't even get mounted on his shadow facts but look at that we have another beautiful wizard saruman the white armory is finally up on the field for principino and yeah now they need to stall the fight until this gandalf is on the field and he's going to be white, of course. Maybe they can make something happen, but they need to be fast. They need to be extremely fast. Beautiful fireball from Saruman. And this Gondo player, Kiwi, is trying to fish the power points. He's still missing to get or to turn his Gandalf the Grey into Gandalf the White. Very important. Be careful with the Gondor Knights, though. Don't lose them like that. He might uh, lose them. He's running into the Pikeman, but looks like he will get away just in time. So Isengard was sending a couple of units to the well from his ally to get the sustain over time. That's why I'm in love with the combination of evil and good. Because they can actually, you know, make each other, boost each other. Evil factions have generally more leadership and like a stronger eco. Good factions have more sustain, more heroes they can work with. And can also provide lots of sustain slash leadership to your army. So overall the combination between good and evil in a 2v2 match. Is just great but so is the combination of good and good it means Gondor and Rohan combination when he means a wizard arrives precisely <laughs> arrives I can't even talk a wizard arrives precisely when he means the boys and he's getting mounted on his shadow facts Gandalf the orange just in time oh Saruman Alvin allies for the second time from the green Gondor player. Now they are trying to fist some power points, but Gandalf is coming. Gandalf is coming. Can he do something? Pew! Oh, he's using the lightning sword. And he's the light. Gandalf, Gandalf, Gandalf. He was using heal, but the wrong direction. The wrong direction. He's going to potentially go down. No, 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 no. He's getting in safety just in time. The Vizar Plus was not very effective since those units they have a lot of leadership. Remember, Gandalf also provides leadership for you 50% more armor and 200% more combat experience. Dude, this Isengard is really behind. I don't know about that. What is happening? Can they defend themselves? Because Trebuchet coming, Gandalf eventually going to turn white very, very soon. Yeah, he is like really close. It's a massive power spike. And Dexter, with the Warchan on his Gondor Knights, has to make a move. Elvin warriors, by the way, if they are using the swords, they cannot get trampled down. It means not only they are immune to trample damage, but they are even damaging the enemy units when they are trying to trample them. Lutz will get away <laughs> just in safety. Very close, by the way. Level 5 Freezing Rain is going to be used for the nullifying leadership bonuses from the enemy units. That means the Alvin Warriors, right as we are talking, have no leadership. Beautiful Wizard Plus from the young Gandalf. He might be in trouble, but luckily... Oh, yeah. Alvin Warriors, they have a crazy amount of range. Legolas trying to press S and get in safety. And this Gandalf might get the chance to Wizard Plus. 
Look at us with the boom, what is gonna beat? He's committing and Legolas has been taken down. Okay, okay, fireball. What is this fiesta? Now, uh, Dexter actually was able to deal great amount of damage, but unfortunately for him, he was losing the highest level Gondonite and also his Gandalf. And no trade is worth in which you need to sacrifice your Gandalf unless it might, you know, save you the game or, it, you know, when you are losing and that's the only way you can save yourself, then it's worth it, I guess. But other than that, no world in which you want to lose your Gandalf to claim anything else, you know? Gandalf is just like a game-changing hero and his presence all alone is gonna put a lot of pressure on the enemy players. And of course, for that reason, Dexter has to revive him, and for that, he needs to invest 2,000 resources. There is a Gandalf from Kiwi. He's getting actually inside the base. What's going on? Closing the gate, hoping for the best. <laughs> but, in, you know, until or as long as the Rohan player has the control of the middle camp, they have always the upper hand. Since, like, the distance, you know, from the middle to the enemy base is just so short in compared to the distance from your own castle to the enemy castle. And in the worst case scenario, they can peel back. They have, like, two wells in the middle with a lot of additional leadership from the statues. So they can always take even a bad trade, if this makes sense for you guys, in which they take a bit more damage than they deal. But since they have, like, much more sustain, they can afford to do that multiple times until eventually they will unlock strong power points like... And summon Eagle Summon or even the Army of the Dead later on. Now we have also Aragorn for even more leadership. Nice Hulk Strike from Legolas. He's level 5 by now, and that means Gandalf from Dexter, if he rejoins the battlefield, has to be careful. And like I said many, many times, the weakness of the combos is the lack of mobility. And this catapult, or trebuchet rather, is going to hit like a truck. Boom! It's hard, especially for the Pikeman Crossbowman combo, since they are even slower than the Uruk Crossbowman combo, you know? You see, the elves are eating those Pikemen alive. Paramir, what are you doing, my friend? Paramir might be in trouble. He's trying to get mounted, but I'm assuming he's gonna go down. Paramir, Paramir, the captain of Gondor. Let's zoom in actually a bit more to see his face when he's on the ground. Oh, Faramir, never mind. <laughs> I'm also using a zoom out tool, by the way, which doesn't only give me the chance to zoom out this far. But also zoom out really in, you know what I'm saying? The Alvin Warriors glowing, shining bright like a diamond with this much leadership. They can also be leveled up from the train arches from Legolas. And what I would love to do, or what I would love to see rather, is this, you know, Gonzo recruiting also Boromir and putting Boromir next to the archers. Because there is a high chance that, we will get, that he will get the one level he's missing to unlock his own leadership. And that's gonna make it enough so you can burst down every hero, Gandalf, Lourdes, and Saruman in no time with the Alvin Warriors, you know? Of will protect these more pressure, more pressure, more map control fights. Green Gondor is doing a phenomenal job. Cutting down all the resource income from the orange Gondor player Dexter. The pressure is real. The commitment now on the trebuchet, very important. Now, uh, Isengard has to make a move. The level 5 Gondor is gonna get away, but this one might be taken down, potentially. Gandalf can always use the Easter line to finish him off. Looks like he doesn't want to do that. Should be doing it, definitely. It's a lot of money he would be losing this way. The orange Gondor player, Dexter. There is one single trebuchet. Don't be afraid and take it down already. Like, you cannot just watch them destroying your entire base. And be afraid this much from one single trebuchet. You know what I'm saying? That's all you gotta do. You have still more leadership, if I'm not mistaken. The four chant from and Lourdes. You have Saruman as well. You know? I mean, pretty equal leadership. Gandalf. He's already on the field from the orange counter player Dexter. Warchan has been used. Freezing Rain is available and can be used. Now, when you use Freezing Rain, you gotta make a move. Very important, then you need to commit on the middle. Beautiful shot with the trebuchets. There is one more. This catapult has been taken down. And Visa, oh, look, you see? You know, I'm telling you guys. Lourdes, the anti hero, he's almost dead though. But uh, Gandalf from the green Gondor player Kiwi has been taken down. Pleasing Rain is active. Now is your time to shine. Now is your time to shine. Oh, but sometimes he needs time and he will be missing one of the juiciest Wizard Plus we could have seen for a long time. Gandalf. Okay. You see the range of the Alvin Warriors, guys? It's crazy. Especially the range from Legolas. You know, he can, sh he can shoot you from a mile distance. Saruman! Saruman is fast enough to dodge or to get away, you know, from those kind of situations. Saruman and Lourdes are equally as fast, and they are the fastest infantry heroes on foot in the entire game, alongside with Aragorn when he has Anduril's sword or Legolas, you know? 
of course, like Lord, uh, uh, not Lords, I mean, Boromir, Faramir, when they are dismounted, or when Faramir is dismounted, rather, and of course, Gandalf the Grey, Teldin, Elmir, when they are dismounted, are not as fast as Aragorn in Legolas, and of course, Gimli is the slowest when he has no Slayer. Now we have Ballista, so it's like a siege ward at this point. I mean, that's kind of a little bit too lame, to be honest. I don't like this trebuchet that much. I would not go for them if I would be the Green Gonzo player. I would just, you know, spam a lot of Condor Knights and try to win the game without them. Because they are kind of killing the fan factor of this epic clash between armies. You know what I'm saying? But let's be real. If Isengard chooses to use the Freezing Rain, then there is no equal fight anymore. Because Freezing Rain is messing up the enemy army big time. No more leadership in Battle for Middle of One means that you are out of the game. You know, it's a big leadership based game play in this Battle for Middle of One. So the trebuchet has been taken down. He has even Glorious Charge. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Is Lourdes dead actually? And Lourdes got killed. I missed that. He was pretty low, but I didn't see how he got killed. Does Dex have heal? The answer is no. He has heal on cooldown. So with that being said, uh, be careful. Cancel your Visa Blast. On the other side, Noldo, the Rohan player, has 4 power points collected after the Anduril Sword and Elvin Wood. He's 2 power points and a bit more away from getting the End Summon unlocked from the Spellbook, which might, give, which might give you another opening, because you could just End Summon the Gonzo and break his walls and get inside the jeans, you know? 4 power points collected now, getting closer and closer for the power spike. Kiwi, the green Gonzo player at the top left side, has e uh, Eagle Summon in 3 power points ready, or Cloud Break in 4. Okay. Elven Summon for the fifth time, I believe. He was getting the Elven Summon unlocked quite fast. The Ballista has been taken down. Visa Blast. Heal has been used from the Green Gonzo player on this Condor Knight, which means it's on cooldown. And by the way, also in BFME 1, it's important to kind of notice the abilities from your hero, from the opening players. And when you see he use Heal, then you know you have like a cooldown window you can work with. You know the Heal is on cooldown. Of course, we are playing against Rohan, who has also heal. But you see the pressure from Legolas? Dude, uh, I mean, I would say go for a Warm Tongue, but it's easier said than done. He will die, you know? Because Warm Tongue, after using that, you will not be able to move for, for like 4 or 5 seconds. You know what I'm saying? The Zeta has been taken down. The pressure is real. They are getting money. I believe it's from Lourdes. Lourdes is looking for a chance to cripple. He's going... I don't know what he's doing. Oh, okay, has been taken down. He was able to cripple Legolas. Legolas, boom, kill. Oh no, Legolas, in, you know, in the uh, Alvin army, Lord is taking him out in a one-on-one. -on -one. In the one guy costs 1,200, the other guy costs 3,000. And now tell me that Lord isn't the best hero in the entire game. About cost efficiency-wise. I'm telling you guys, in all Battle for Middle-earth games, Lourdes is just the best. Absolute best. In Battle for Middle-earth 1, it makes, it makes kind of sense. Because Isengard has only two heroes, like Lourdes and Saruman, and that's it. So it's kind of expected, and it's supposed to be like that. That they are, of course, very efficient heroes. Since factions like Rohan, especially Rohan, has like a bunch of heroes. While Isengard has only two. Glorious Charge for the second time. The pressure is crazy. Cloudbreak has been used, by the way, and Isengard player Principuna needs only 5 power points, but 5 power points can be a lot if you are down a lot. And Glorious Charge on these Gondor Knights, it makes them almost invincible. Freezing Rain has been used now for the third time. Uh, the green Gondor player, uh, the orange Gondor player, rather, Dexter, has to now make a move. Legolas is dead. Now he has a window in which the enemy units have no leadership bonuses and just make something happen. But don't underestimate Aragorn! Boom! Oh, heal in the post last possible second. Looks like he will get away. Just kill the catapult before you get away. Yeah, beautiful. And this Gandalf is almost level 8. He's going to now use the... But, but Aragorn, 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 Aragorn! And how many times did I see that? Dude, when Aragorn is nearby, you can't stand still and use any ability. You know what I'm saying? Aragorn, the Gandalf Slayer. Oh my goodness. The, the blue sword, Yeti sword, you know? May the power be with you, may the, may the force be with you, rather, right? He's level 8 now, and you know, I know, that, you know, there are two game-changing heroes once they, are once they are level 10. One of them is just dead because he got killed by the other one, who is Aragorn. When he's level 10, he has the Aragorn, uh, not Aragorn, uh, Army of the Dead Summon, you know what I'm saying? Which is just massive, and he's like the tankiest hero by far, when he has the Anduril Sword and the Blade Master active, like he does for now. And he will just one-shot everything on his path. Look how many level 3 furnaces and towers and buildings are shooting him down at the same time. But he doesn't care. Yes, even Atelas for the self-sustain, which can also work on the nearby allied heroes. 
You have level 5 Elven Warriors. Legolas is back in the business. He's now level 8. Has the Arrow Wind. Which, by the way, is one of the pow most powerful single target abilities. So if you can hit Gandalf with that all alone, you can kill Gandalf even when he's healing. So you can kill Gandalf from 100 to 0 twice, you know, <laughs> with the Arrow Wind all alone. But you need to hit Gandalf all alone. And the Arrow Wind is kind of similar to the Lightning Sword from Gandalf. So it's like a circle like that. And it will attack automatically everything in the circle. So the less units are in the circle, the more effective it is going to be for the single target damage. Three and a half power points collected for... Or three and a half power points away, sorry, from getting or getting uh, the Balrog summon unlocked. Which is still, you know, easier said than done. He has lost all the heroes. Lords can't get out on the field, I believe. And Tita is going to be taken down right before that. Alvin summon, more trebuchet are coming from behind. Glorious charge has been used. Arrow wind is coming in clutch. You see the blue arrows coming in clutch from Legolas. Hitting everywhere and hitting everything. And yeah, the Alvin Warriors, they have so much levels now. Lourdes is back on the field, but what can he do against such a reckless aid? Maybe he can kill once again a hero, but if Rohan is paying attention, Lourdes should not be able to make it anywhere close to Legolas this time. Everything is falling apart. Dexter, the orange Gondor player, will be left alone very soon, as Noldor, the Rohan player, is only 3 power points away from getting his Offbreaker summon unlocked from the spellbook, which of course is going to be a game-winning ability. What a beautiful moment. Principino only one power point away, but he has not much left. Actually, he was again able to kill Legolas. And now, dude, imagine that. Now he has the Balrog summon ready, but he has no vision. In order to summon things in Battle for Middle of One, you need to have vision. And Aragorn got crippled down. Gandalf, the orange Gandalf uh, player from Dexter, will be missing it, but he can now kill this Aragorn potentially. Eagle summon, uh, Lourdes will be surviving the burst from the Gandalf Israelite. Gandalf is going down, Aragorn is going down, and Dexter, trust me on that one, he will be fishing so many power points from the Eagle summon all alone. He's killed two of the most important heroes in the entire game, and now the Balrog might be able to change the outcome of this game. Are you kidding me? And Isengard, even though he has no money, but he has still the game-winning ability. All he needs to do, and he's actually saying Dexter is like giving him vision, and there comes the Balrog summon, ladies and gentlemen. Now the question is, how long does Nol the need for the War of Power, uh, for the Army of the Dead? If you feed those eagles, he will get it in no time. And with the army after that, he might be able to defend his ally's base. The Balrog is flying inside the jeans. Breathfire is coming in clutch right after. And hitting, of course, four buildings, which is more than enough to take down the entire castle by yourself. Now it's a 2v1 situation if Gondor loses that. That's why the Gondor player is trying to finish off the Isengard base. So it's not going to be a 2v1. It's going to be a 1v1 if he loses the main castle. Because, oh, why? He destroyed the gate? It's a waste of time, and with that, he will not be able to finish off the base, by the way. Principino is now pinging his ally and saying, yeah, next I was destroying the gate, you can now go inside the jeans and finish move. But the problem is, it was not even needed. You know, you can do that with Balrog all alone. I cannot believe that. Lightning Sword, and yeah, holy moly. Who, who got killed, Faramir? Or Aragorn. I don't know who was getting killed. Lord is still alive. By the way, Arrow, man, that's what I'm talking about. You see? Pew, pew, pew. And Legolas is hitting like an absolute track. And I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that. Look at the coordination, you know? Because Dexter was sending all his Gondor Knights now to finish off the base with. And then the second he did that, Noldor, the Rohan player, was using his army after that summon and saying, No, 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 you good sir. You are not finishing off my ally today. You had your chance with the Valrog and you missed it. You failed it. And now it's our turn to win this match. I cannot believe that. I know it sounds crazy, but if Isengard would not do what he did, like wasting time with the Balrog to, to take down the gate for no reason, they could have defeated this Gondor. It would be a 2v1 situation, you know? And even though he has army after that, this game would be won by the... Like, a number advantage in a match is huge and massive. And Dexter is also really close for his own... Uh, army of the dead. You know what I'm saying? With his Gandalf, with a couple of more Gondor Knights, he could have make, made it happen. But they couldn't even finish off the Gondor base. I cannot understand. I cannot believe that. What a Fiesta game, my dude. What a Fiesta game. That's what I like to see the most, you know? 
The Gondor Knights are going down, though, to the towers. I don't know about that. Can they even finish off this? I don't think so. But Aragorn is here. Don't you worry. Aragorn is here. He's almost level 10, too, for the Army of the Dead. I mean, the Nisengard has nothing left. And indeed, I can show you what he has left. He has 12 out of 300 available command points. I'm assuming these are the workers from the mills. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? No Lurts, no Saruman, no Uruk Pit, no Uruks, no Combos, no Crossbowmen, no Pikemen. Nothing like that. Holy moly. And yet, he missed the chance to actually finish off the Gondor Beast. I cannot believe that. Like, when you kill three, four buildings and you can, you know, optimally, ideally you want to destroy five with the breath fire. But even if you destroy only three or four, it's enough time for you to finish off the castle. Trust me. Like, especially Gondor Castle is so easy for Balrog to destroy. You always get the chance to use two times breath fire with Balrog. So basically, I've shown you also guys many, many times in my older replays, and you want to fly inside the jeans right here. As you are flying in mid-air, you want to use your Ignite. When you land on the Tita, it will deal damage. So you need to only hit it one time to destroy it. Then you step up like one, two steps forward. You use Breath Fire, which will allow you to destroy five buildings at the same time, right? Then you will be focusing on each side, left or right. You choose one, you focus on it. If Balrog Ignite, you need to make sure that Balrog is always ignited, which is giving you 200% damage boost. And you can kill the one side, fly on the fly to the other side, kill it. Then you have still time just in case he's rebuilding the Sitter. Just kill the Sitter with either a normal auto attack or the fire whip, and that's it, you know. That's it. The Isengard base is gonna fall apart. He has nothing to defend himself. And Principino, ladies and gentlemen, has been defeated. Uh, we have still Gandalf, and Gandalf likes to say that is always so, but trust me on that one, he was not talking about this very moment. Eagle Summon will be used now from the orange Gondor player on Aragorn. But he will see that killing Aragorn, even with the Eagles, is not the easiest thing at all, win, my dude. Level 10 Aragorn and level 10 Legolas. What else do you want? Look the damage from these heroes. Heal has been used. Look Legolas's damage, boys. A couple of Elven warriors. But with Aragorn being around, they killed the Legolas. Yes, Aragorn was able to survive. And summon now to break the gate and end this game once and for all. What a phenomenal game. Dexter has the army after that. But what's the matter if you, you know, he, know, he knows. He knows that even if I use it now, just gonna delay my death. But it's inevitable, you know. It's gonna end. I will lose. They missed the chance, guys. Let me know what do you think about uh, the Gondor. <laughs> uh, bees, you know, that Isengard decided all of a sudden to use the Balrog to kill the gate. And then the momentum, the timing was kind of gone. So by the time Dexter, the orange Gondor player, decided to commit on the enemy base, which from which the gate was open, the Rohan player, Noldo, got the army after that, which he could use to save his ally. And then from there, it was pretty much downhill, you know? But it was still fun to watch, fun to cast especially. I hope it was also fun to watch for you guys. If it was, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, guys. Have a fantastic and phenomenal time. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.